Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to use the new AI Music Editor in DaVinci Resolve Studio 20. This is an incredible feature that allows you to trim or adjust the length of your audio clip to fit within a specific time frame, and it'll use AI to find the right way to splice together different parts to try to make it fit more musically within your allotted time frame. So here I have a film reel that I made for my production company, Doubt Me Media. It's a collection of different shots from various projects I've done. And right now it has a more soft ambient background song. But let's say I wanted to change the track. So here I have an instrumental that I downloaded from Artlist. I'm just going to play a little piece of it. Now right now I just threw the track here so there's nothing edited specifically to this track. I literally just downloaded it and placed it in here. What I want to do is I want to make this track fit perfectly within this film reel without editing it. So I'm going to select the audio track and then if you go under the audio tab in the inspector, right underneath speed change you'll see AI music editor as an option. Now you won't see this as an option playing the audio that's connected to a video clip. That option's not there. But if you create a new track and drag in an audio only file, you should get the AI music editor. Now you have two ways that you can actually make the adjustment. You can type in a specific target length, click adjust, and it'll trim the track to be that length. So for example, let's say we want it to end at 103.15. I could type that in, 103.15, and then click adjust. Now it's going to analyze the clip. Depending on your computer, this could take some time. And now you can see that it trimmed it. And now if you zoom in, you'll see this little stitches looking icon. And essentially what that did is it found a spot that's similar and connected them on their own, taking more from the end to bring it to this area here. So let's go ahead and play it and see if you can hear when it's spliced together. Decent job. Doesn't sound terrible. I think most people wouldn't notice it. I noticed that it's not perfect. However, if you're doing this to a track that's underneath some dialogue or that's more of a filler, you definitely won't notice it, especially if you bring the audio down. But now if we forward through towards the end, you can see that it got me pretty close to being where I want it to be. So that way the song actually ends with the video ending. It's actually not bad. Let's go ahead and undo that. Now let's do it manually by selecting the live trim. This is going to give you a little icon symbol right here at the trim at the end or the beginning when you're going to trim a clip. You can see that it has what looks like this little wave symbol next to the bracket. If you see that, then you can click and drag to wherever you want it to end. Let's say we want it to end there. Actually, let's end it just a little bit before just to see if there's some type of variation. Let go. It'll analyze the clip again. All right, let's see if we can hear where it's spliced. Right here, we see a little icon there. Not bad. Not bad at all. Both of them were very usable. And another great thing is that you actually get variations of the edit that the AI did for you. So you can see right here, versions one is selected. If we click on two, now we'll see a different version. So version one, the edit takes place more in the middle. Version two is more towards the front. Let's hear this and see what it sounds like. I actually think this version was better. Now, if you've already had your AI generate the change, but let's say you wanted to now extend it, now it'll find a new spot for it to splice. But now it's only showing one version. So I'm not sure exactly what dictates to make it have multiple versions or not. But if worse comes to worse, you can always undo and then just do it all over again. This one's interesting. This one did two different splices here. Let's see what that doesn't look good to me. That one didn't work out very well. Let's try again. This one gave me three variations, but it's blank. Now going back and forth on the versions, now it's showing up. So you can see it's a little buggy still. It's not perfect. The first time we did it, it sounded and looked great. However, now that I've tried it again, maybe the best bet would be to delete it, drag it back in, and then try again. But again, the first one came out fantastic and was actually very usable.
We're still in the beta version of DaVinci Resolve Studio 20, so I'm sure this is only going to get better. I've used it several times now, and I will say that it is very, very usable. Again, especially if you're using this more in the background, lower volume, and you're placing this underneath dialogue or sounds from the video, this can save you a lot of time. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to use the new AI music editor in DaVinci Resolve Studio 20. Now on this channel, I do have a DaVinci Resolve playlist with a lot more tutorials, so make sure to check that out. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.